Day two of the NFL draft has wrapped up, and the Packers make a wild move up to select Christian Watson, finally get their hands on a wide receiver, a weapon for Aaron Rodgers, and then in the third round, select a big boy offensive tackle, a wild man, Sean Ryan from UCLA. I'm Joey, and joining me to recap the Packers' wild draft night two is my friend Big B. Big B, question off the top. How yes. many Dr. Peppers were consumed tonight? Oh, my. Tonight or the whole day? Ooh, I, to, whole day, whole day. I think five, to be honest. Five. They're okay. flowing. They, they sure were. I had to get through that somehow, so. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the, the weight from the excitement from trading up for Christian Watson, like, and then the cool down after that, and then the realization – like, oh, my God, we don't pick until the end of the third round. Yeah. That was uh, that was quite something. It felt like three hours. Might have been close to that, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. But probably. let's talk about that move. Uh, it was pretty shocking to see the Packers all of a sudden move up uh, to the second overall pick in the second round. Uh, trading with the Vikings, both their second round picks that the Packers held, uh, the one from the da- Devontae Adams trade, and then the one they originally held, 28th selection. Um, so, obviously, a shocking move. And they went up there and got their guy in Christian Watson, who I had labeled as one of my draft crushes. Um, so, I was overjoyed to see them select Watson. A lot of people obviously thought it was Pickens. George Pickens from Georgia. Uh, and I said, you know, in, it's probably Pickens before the pick happened. I said, it's probably Pickens, but I'd like Watson more. Um, I didn't tweet that out. I just said it to my dad. I have no proof of that. So, you know, but anyways. The lies. All lies. Then. I'm not lying. Just just go back to our episode and hear how much I loved him. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I really feel like Watson – is everything the Packers want in a wide receiver and everything they needed in a wide receiver, just as far as what he provides in the, the uh, aspects of a wide receiver outside of just catching the ball and running routes. You know, he's uh, a very good run blocker. He is able to take sweeps, uh, kind of has a body of Debo Samuel. I know so many Debo Samuel comparisons have been made for wide receivers in this draft class. But uh, Watson kind of seems to fit that mold. He's also a kick returner, also a deep threat to uh, possibly continue to replace uh, MVS, find a way to fill that hole. Big B, what are your thoughts on Green Bay finally getting a a weapon for Aaron? Yeah, I really, really love the pick. Just a fantastic pick in my opinion and I'm excited to see what he does he probably would have been a first round receiver if he didn't play in whatever conference uh, North Dakota State plays in yeah I would have been a lot higher if he played at like a, a Ohio State he's that good so this is a fantastic pick I love it so that's, happy. that's definitely true about him playing at a small school like NDSU uh sorry Russ Uglum. but yeah. Super athletic as well, a 10 on a relative athletic score. So that's pretty awesome. Um, and then the question you ask yourself, uh, especially looking at the wide receiver depth chart, is he a day one starter? Uh, and the answer to that with wide receiver specifically, since you have three or four to five guys um, listed as starters, really, in a game, he's going to be a starter. But Big B, what are your thoughts on and what do you think his role is going to be early on in his rookie season? Well, he'll probably um, share snaps a lot with some receiver. I don't really know who that will be yet, but he's definitely kind of an MVS type, if you Mm -hmm. could say that. So he'd probably um, be put in that MVS role a lot early in his career with the Packers until he finally, you know, gets comfortable with everything. Yeah, it will be interesting to see how he splits snaps with uh, Sammy Watkins, who the Packers just signed before the draft, because Watkins is also expected to be able to fill that MVS role. And, you know, well, 
either Watson or Watkins might not be the best comparison for MVS. They certainly have the ability and have the traits to be able to provide the same uh, abilities that MVS did for this Packers offense. So really intrigued to see that, intrigued to see how they use them, um, especially just of his um, ability to play in the backfield. We'll have to see. Um, but Christian Watson could not be more thrilled. Um, obviously, people have to have something to complain about, so their choice on this one was that the Packers gave up too much for him. But you look at the wide receiver run that occurred pretty much right before the Packers would be picking at 53. I mean, the Packers picked Watson at 34, and then another wide receiver was not selected. The Texans at pick 44 with John Mechie, and then you scroll down a little bit here, Ty Quan Thornton from Baylor going at pick 50 to the Patriots, uh, and then Pickens at 52 to the Steelers, uh, Alec Pierce, uh, where the Packers would originally be picking at pick 53, great fit for the Packers, and then Sky Moore at 54 to the Chiefs, and it just kept on going. So certainly would have been a, a tough situation for the Packers. I'm sure they would have still been happy to get Sky Moore or Alec Pierce at that point, but them trading up those two for two second rounders tells you that they really wanted Christian Watson and they were willing to move all the way up for him. Um, and they got their guy. So glad to see that. Now, after a lot of waiting and a lot of sitting around and eating pretzels and drinking Dr. Peppers, the Packers were on the clock again at pick 92, where they selected the, the crazy man who all I really know right now is that he is 320 pounds, six foot four. He has incredible luscious hair and is just a character. The man's name is Sean Ryan. This is one of those picks uh, where it's very much Packers with their offensive linemen. You look at Royce Newman from last year, and as well as John Runyon, John Dietzen uh, over the past two years. That's just like, you know, will they play offensive guard? Will they play offensive tackle? A little bit of both. Who knows? They have the ability to do both. Um, Tyler Brook, who we had on before the draft, actually mentioned this. I forget what player he was talking about, but he's talking about somebody at offensive tackle that could play both guard and offensive tackle and how the Packers uh, tend to do that. Um, and it's kind of a, it's a good mindset, especially for this year, I think, just to have somebody that can play both because there's a lot of questions right now, um, really all depending on Elton Jenkins and how he recovers from his injury. That's a big question because – Elton could be your starting left guard, or if they don't trust throwing Yash out there at right tackle, they put out uh, they would put out Elton there at right tackle, and you can trust John Runyon at left guard, Royce at right guard, John Josh Myers at center. But if Elton's not healthy, you pretty much have a competition between Yash, Royce Newman, and now you bring Sean Ryan into the mix. So going to be interesting uh, to see how that works out. And I'm already excited for camp battles. I am so excited for the training camp battles between these offensive linemen. It's going to be so exciting to follow on Twitter. Um, Big B, what are your thoughts on this band with a great head of lettuce? Yeah, well, like I said before we were getting on here, I was actually going to take him in my – most previous mock draft, but then I decided not to last minute and took somebody else. But I really like the pick. He is very versatile, very Packers type of a pick. In my opinion, I think he's going to play at guard most likely. Mm. Um, just my opinion. I don't know why. I have nothing to back that up. <laughs> but he did play left tackle at UCLA, so he's going to have to make that transition over to right tackle. And I, I mean, he's going to have a whole summer to transition over there. So I think he'll be ready for the season to start. And I did find this little tidbit mm -hmm. uh, after we, he got drafted. He allowed zero sacks in 2020. Wild. Ooh. Okay. So this man can be a beast. And he has a great set of hair. So yes. he's already David Bakhtiari 2.0. You like to hear it. 
you know, with what you mentioned about switching from left tackle to right tackle, man, that just reminds me of a quote from Billy Turner about switching over from those positions. Not going to share it, but for those who want to uh, do their own research and lure this answer out, I, I highly encourage you to do so because it is just an epic answer from Billy Turner, and I'm going to miss him. But that's all we have for you. Uh, as far as day two recap, we're going to end it off talking about what the Packers look to do on day three of the draft. Tomorrow, they will have another six picks to spend on some players to invest the future in. Big B, they got defensive tackle. They got an off-ball inside linebacker. They got their wide receiver, and they ended the night off with offensive tackle. Looking ahead to day three, what do you think Brian Goot and co. is looking for on day three? Um, I personally want the Packers to go out and get um, Jake Ferguson from Wisconsin. He is a monster. Mm-hmm. I absolutely loved watching him at Wisconsin. So tight end is a position I want the Packers to draft. And I think they will, but there is a lot of depth at the tight end spot. So you never know. But I want Jake Ferguson in a Packer uniform as well as edge, which mm-hmm. Ryan said that it's – He's pretty comfortable with the room. Shout out Randy Ramsey. Oh, um, God. I just pray that they add somebody else because I don't want to see Jonathan Garvin out there again running around trying to tackle somebody. So, but that's just me. So, tight end and edge. The only two yes. I'm satisfied with. Maybe safety, but. I'm I agree safe. with you. I agree with you on those. Uh, tight end, especially. Um, once you get into day three, it's such a crapshoot and it depends so much on how the board falls and they could end up missing out on a, a depth piece at a position they were looking for, but tight end, I definitely think cross that off. Not only you get another pass catcher um, to make up for the lack of them in the wide receiver room as of now, um, but also just, just a need that we talked about um, many times before the draft edge. Absolutely. I cringe at Brian Kudikin saying, we are happy with the room, uh, something along those lines that we have now. Um, hey, man, maybe he's right. Maybe they've been working in a lab with Randy Ramsey, Garvin, and Nali I all offseason. Who knows, man? But, yeah, I'd really like to see him take a player there. Other than that, hopefully another wide receiver. Um, and most importantly, let's take a long snapper tomorrow. Let's do it. Beef give, up the special teams. Give me all the special teams players. I don't care if they play quarterback. If they're playing special teams, I want him on the Packers. Exactly. Yes. That's where we're going to end this video off. Let us know your thoughts on our thoughts and also the Packers selections in the comments down below. Follow us on all the social media. Subscribe to this YouTube channel, and we'll talk to you later. As always, go Pack Go. Go.